Hello, my name is Keith Smith and welcome to this video on importing SOLIDWORKS models into Mastercam to design and create toolpaths. The first thing that uh, you'll want to do is open up the uh, live template file that I've provided to you. So under open, uh, go to wherever you've unzipped and save that file. And mine is right here in this file and I'm going to select the chess template. When this comes in, you already have the stock prepared and uh, a check a work holding device. It's set up right now for a Haas lathe, but if you want, if you're going to be using the Akuma, uh, you'll replace that um, controller with an Akuma controller by opening up the file menu and then uh, select replace. And then under the replace menu, you can scroll down and find the uh, the Akuma and open that up, but I'm going to leave this at pause right now, and I'm just going to OK that. Alright, next we're going to uh, merge that SOLIDWORKS model that you created into the Mastercam file. So uh, under the file menu options, select merge, and then it's going to want to search for uh, your file, but we're going to uh, change this filter to uh, SOLIDWORKS models. Uh, that way it's only going to look for SOLIDWORKS model and then you can see I have two uh, models in here and I'm going to select uh, font 2 and I'm just going to go ahead and open that up. Now this may come in exactly as you want it. Uh, it might not. Um, if it doesn't, uh, you'll have to use the transform menu options in order to uh, manipulate it, rotate it, just as we did in the previous Mastercam exercise. Uh, my uh, pawn did come in oriented correctly, so I'm going to transform it though. I need to transform it so that the front of that ball is right at uh, Z0. And uh, I just know by, uh, you know, because I created this model, I know that that uh, that ball on the end there it has an 80 thousandths radius, therefore it is uh, now 80 thousandths, I need to transform it 80 thousandths in the negative z direction. So uh, I'm going to select trans translate, I'm going to select this entity and uh, hit my enter key in order to uh, select that. And I'm going to move it in the z direction, uh, negative 80 thousandths. So it's given me a preview of what it's going to do, and uh, notice that my copy menu is, or my copy button is uh, highlighted, uh, which means it's now going to create two bodies, and I don't want that, so I'm going to select move, so that all, all it's going to do now is move that body, and uh, if I like the preview, I'll just go ahead and OK that. All right, so now that you have your part imported, and it's oriented the way you want and positioned the way you want, uh, we'll start putting some toolpaths on here. And um, so we're going to look at four different toolpaths, base, rough, finish, and part off. So that's all the toolpaths you're, you're going to need for this project. So the first thing to do is to go to lathe turning and then select the uh, face option. So. Uh, here's we're going to be using the toolpaths in this group here, and if we expand this menu, we'll see what's available to us. And eventually, we're going to get to cut off. But right now, we're going to start with face because that's the first thing we want to do is to um, establish the face on our part. We need to cut off this excess uh, material in front of our part. So uh, when you first bring up uh, this uh, your operation, you'll see that the tool library has. Uh, tons of tools in it. Um, we're going to select the, uh, the uh, tool library that I've provided in this template. So go to uh, library and then select this open key and search down for the uh, manufacturing uh, 120 tool library. And uh, just select OK. Don't worry that there's no tools being shown here right now. So now you notice that uh, we're still in that facing operation, but we only have two tools available to us because uh, there's only three tools in this library, and um, 
and there's only two that can do this operation. So uh, we're going to select the uh, tool one, that's your rough turning tool, and the feed rate, uh, 10 thousandths per revolution is probably a good uh, feed rate for this operation, and 350 will be a good constant surface speed for this operation. I do change the maximum spindle speed to 4,000 because that's as fast as our uh, lathe will go. And then check the coolant option and make sure coolant on it should be, but no harm to check. And um, the next thing, so that we have our tool and uh, we have the cutting speed and the feed rate established. We'll look at base parameters, and here's where we can change some uh, other parameters. And um, right now, I would like to leave five thousandths in the, uh, in the on the base for my finish tool to finish. But other than that, I'm going to accept all the defaults here. And um, one thing I'll point out is that the tool compensation type right now says computer which means we're going to let Mastercam mathematically compensate for tool nose radius and that kind of thing. So we're not going to be using uh, the where or the control options here. We're just going to select computer and uh, we'll OK this. So that happened really quickly, but if you notice some tool whipped by there and paste off the tool. But what we're left with is, uh, and it's difficult to see in this video, I know there's actually a blue line uh, coming down here showing the feed line and then this yellow line represents the rapid move after it uh, phased that off. We wanted to see uh, what that operation looked like before moving on. Uh, we can go to the verify selected operations uh, button right here and uh, we're going to get a little cartoon of what that operation is going to look like. So. Uh, you can see here's our check, and uh, here's here's our stock, here's our tool getting ready to do this. I must slow this down so it doesn't move so quickly. So by using this speed button, and then we'll go ahead and play it. Paste it, wrap it away, and uh, that's that's where we're at right now. Okay, so I'm gonna close this, and um, and we're now ready to create the rough tool path. So. Uh, under this group, we're going to select rough, and uh, it's asking us, uh, well, you know, for a chain. So a chain is considered uh, the outside periphery, you could say, uh, the geometry of, of, of a part. Um, but because it's looking at this as a solid, it's not going to allow me to, to pick anything on here. I'm going to have to switch to solids, because that this is a solid. And it hid the solid just to make it easier for me to see. Um, you know what chain I'm going to be selecting. I could uh, make that solid appear again just by selecting um, uh, this hide uh, show button. Uh, I'm going to toggle that back to hiding that that solid, and now I'm going to select the, the front of that uh, chain, the front of, front of the nose actually, and I'm going to be on the top side because I'm going to be on the positive side of uh, X. And uh, right now. It's showing me where this toolpath is going to start and where it's going to end and in what direction. So we do want to make sure that it's uh, headed in this kind of, we could look at that as a clockwise, I mean kind of clockwise direction. We can toggle that with the switch right here if it happened to have come up in the, uh, going the wrong direction and sometimes it does. Uh, well, um, then, you know, that wouldn't work for us. And, well, what it would do is it would start the toolpath right here in the middle of our chain. That's not what we want. So I'm going to uh, toggle that back. And so now it's headed in the right direction. I'll, but I do want it to end on this part. So it's going to start. So it's considered this, it's considering this geometry all chained together. And uh, it's going to start here on this link. And then it's going to end on this link. Okay, so that's that's good. That's exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm going to select um, OK. I'm going to be using that uh, rep, uh, OD turn tool. So we're going to leave this at station number one, offset number one, because we're using tool number one. Feed rate at 10 thousandths per revolution uh, does sound good. 
but now it's asking me about a, a plunge feed rate. It's slowing it down just so uh, a little unsure of maybe where, how much material will be there. I'm going to just go ahead and leave this at 10 thousandths, just, just like my um, uh, feed rate is going to be for the roughing pass. And then uh, spindle speed of 350 uh, surface feet per minute sounds good. Again, I'm going to change this maximum spindle speed back down to 4 thousandths, 4 thousand, and uh, check to see if my coolant's on, and it is. And I could make a comment here too, I forgot to show you that on the face, but if you want to, you can put in here uh, rough uh, turn OD. And then um, when it processes the program, it's going to include these comments in the program. Of course, they'll be in parentheses, so the controller will ignore it. Um, we're going to look at the rough parameters now. So these are, these are options that uh, you can set. Uh, it's defaulting to these options here, which will probably work pretty well. So depth of cut is 100,000. So, and it's showing you um, uh, what, what that actually means. So if you notice, we're in depth of cut right here. And uh, there's a red line here showing you what they're talking about when they talk about depth of cut. So notice it's not, the depth of cut is in radius and not diameter. So uh, this 100 thousandths depth of cut means uh, 100 thousandths per side. So we're going to reduce the diameter 200 thousandths with each pass. Then it's asking us for a minimum cut depth. Well, it's trying to equally distribute those passes based on how much material has to come off. And it wants to know what's the minimum cut depth you would like to. And that's that's pretty uh, wimpy. I'm just going to leave this at 10 and, and not uh, and not worry too much about, about it. Uh, stock to leave in X. So how much stock should we leave for that uh, finished turn tool? And our finished turn tool has a uh, tool notes radius of 15 thousandths. Um, we could leave, uh, say, 15 thousandths per side. Uh, and that would be uh, equal to our tool nose radius. It should be somewhere between two-thirds and uh, uh, of the tool nose radius and uh, the full radius. And so I'm just going to go ahead and default to uh, 15 thousandths, hoping that I'm going to get a, a little bit better of a finish. And then how much uh, stock to leave in uh, Z? I like to leave like five thousandths in Z. Um, uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that. And uh, another parameter that we uh, should look at is the lead in and lead out parameter. So in the lead out, if we click on that option, we'll get this dialog box, and it's showing us that what the lead in will look like when it feeds in. And that, that's okay. I mean, we could change this so that it led in that way or led in that way, but just straight in will probably be good. It's asking us if we want to extend or shorten the start of the contour. I don't really want to uh, extend the uh, uh, the lead in, but I'm going to want to do that in the lead out. So let's look at the lead out option. And I want the lead out, I, I prefer it to be just straight up. I don't like it. Uh, I like I like the lead out, go straight up so it's, uh, I don't know, just moving the material above the tool. And um, so I'm going to switch that to 90 degrees. And I'm going to extend the end of the contour. The reason being is if I do nothing else, it's going to end at the end of the uh, chain. And I want it to <clears throat> extend out past um, the point of where the part off tool is going to come in. It's just my preference. And our part off tool is 125 thousandths wide. So I'm going to extend the, uh, the end of the contour like 150 thousandths. So uh, we'll highlight this. And we'll call this 0.150, and um, that's all I'm going to do on here. So I'm going to OK this. And again, my tool compensation is on computer. Uh, I prefer not to use cutter compensation when roughing it. It doesn't really uh, do much for us. And well, as you're going to see, uh, I uh, prefer not to use tool compensation in finishing as well. So uh, I think that's about uh, all we're going to do on this, and we'll OK it. And uh, it's showing us what it's going to do. So here's the rough uh, passes. I'm going to zoom in on this just a little bit. So notice that uh, it did extend that roughing tool path past the uh, end of the part. 
items. And uh, what it did also was leave a lot of material here because Mastercam uh, was not going to try to uh, get down in here with that tool. It probably would have gouged the part anyway. It wasn't really that sure about it. It was pretty sure it would. Uh, so I did this. Uh, we could control this but, um, with some parameters that I'm going to show you in the finishing toolpath. But uh, for right now, we'll just call that good. And so uh, let's take a look at uh, where we're at right now. So uh, right now, uh, only the rough passes uh, is, uh, is selected right now. But I'm going to select all the operations by using this uh, button here. And then notice they're both green checked now. I'm going to use that ver verify selected operations uh, option again. And um, here's, our, here's our part where we were before. Uh, I mean, at the very beginning, here's our uncut stock, faces it. And then rust off that material. Okay, so our roughing operation now is complete. Okay, so that's the uh, end of part one. Uh, go on to uh, part two to um, see how we're going to finish this Mastercam operation. All right.